Well, here we are for another Public Service Recognition Week. We are super excited to have you join us this week. Uh, Karen, what's so exciting about Public Service Recognition Week for you? Getting to recognize individuals within my own team mm -hmm. or other people within the community just to say thank you for what they do. Absolutely. Just to say thank you for what they do. Well, there's a lot of people that are out there doing public service work at the federal, state, local levels. There's plenty of people that are using funds that are from contract dollars or grant dollars. But one of the bigger questions that comes up a whole lot is who exactly is a public servant? <laughs> right. We just had that uh, a couple days ago when we took the girls to get their vaccinations. Absolutely. At the county government county. office. Right. So everyone there is a public servant. The people that are driving the county buses, public servants, researchers at universities, public servants, teachers at you know local communities, uh, as well as universities, public servants. So the list uh, goes on. The and list on. goes on. So much so that I think a lot of times people recognize themselves first by whatever occupation they have, even before they see themselves as a public servant. We are so ingrained in the fabric of our nation. It's just, it's really amazing. And well, not just our nation, but our local governments, absolutely. our state gov governments. Our tribal governments as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, Karen, this week, again, it's just super important. It's really a great way for all of us to really say thank you to the public servants that are out there. Um, you know, it, it's funny because it's almost like the matrix. Uh, government happens all around us. We're provided with all sorts of public goods and services, but we don't even realize that they're happening right now. Yeah, kind of like Or the man behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> That's, That's the way, way I like looking to think at of it. it. Well, Always go with the shoes. There you go. Those are awesome shoes. And Karen, you have awesome shoes as well. <laughs> you know, I, I like to think of it as superheroes. You never really know their real identity. All you know is that things just continue to work fine. If there's something on the road, it gets fixed. If there's drainage issues, it gets fixed. Uh, we have so many issues and concerns in, in the world, really, and public servants are continually there. Now, that, of course, doesn't mean that everything is perfect and that everything operates exactly 100% all of the time. But you have to admit, there's really a lot of good stuff that we can be thankful for. Yeah. So for our big question today, who is a public servant? What's our first item to talk about? So the first topic is... They leverage public funds. Right. Yeah. So this is kind of like the whole uh, Jeff Foxworthy thing. You know, if here are some clues that you might be a public servant. <laughs> <laughs> Do you leverage public funds? Then you might be a public servant. Then you might be a public servant. <laughs> and when we say public funds, it's dollars that are appropriated for public works and public good. Um, again, this is our parks. This is our uh, ongoing policy regulations that we have. I mean, what other areas would you see public funds being spent? Besides policy, we have laws, bills. Absolutely. Yeah, law enforcement, uh, bills. Funding for schools, Absolutely. building a new library, mm -hmm. all of that. Uh, and if you have uh, contract dollars that you're using to maintain any and all of that stuff. So if you're providing services for the Department of Defense, like a, a defense contractor, or if you're using county dollars to go about fixing the playgrounds that we talked about. Like in Parks and Rec. Like in Parks and Rec. <laughs> yes, Leslie, nope. <laughs> that, that's definitely really public service. It's really there uh, for everyone's benefit and everyone's value. Right. And you're doing it for the community, not necessarily for the accolades, which I think is kind of embodied in that Parks and Rec, I think it was the, the final episode when they finally <laughs> built the playground and they're like, they, they brought the person who initially put in the request. They're like, here, here's what your tax dollars did and what your public servants did. He's like, nice. Great. Uh, <laughs> see you. And just like walks away. <laughs> Leslie knows, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, that's that's the point. It, it's the whole idea of doing good for good's sake. 
all in and of itself. I mean, we're, people who are public servants, we're not looking to have uh, our, our names everywhere, or news articles written about us or anything like that, or a lot of fame or notoriety. It's just, it's the right thing to do. Uh, and it's amazing because, I mean, you can think about people who leverage public funds doing good work for people that do way more than like the 40 hours a week. And of course, the classic example is teachers who continue to like provide and they work after school and before school. And they, and they provide all the supplies. Absolutely. Yeah, they're doing all the supplies. Tirelessly. There's people who use public funds that are in hospitals. So doctors, nurses, pediatricians, all of that, uh, they're really there to provide additional value for people. Those are certain public service lives. and to save lives. Yeah. What about all of the researchers that have come up with all the vaccines that we depend upon to make our lives good and our quality of life very good as well? Absolutely. All of those. I think uh, OPM estimated that in 2020 on the federal level alone, there was over 2.1 million federal public servants. And again, that's not including state, local and people who use grant dollars and all of that. Um, I always like the idea about professors also being public servants as well. Uh, state institutions um, who are really providing value for uh, students. That, that's certainly a public servant. Mm -hmm. Advancing knowledge and education. I just right. get teary-eyed just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first one. You might be a public servant if you leverage public funds. What's another one? Builds their community. I like this one. Uh, yeah, what about our local communities? Uh, I mean, we have one here where they meet uh, monthly, if not quarterly, and they speak on our behalf to different individuals at the state, local, and sometimes even federal levels about small things. Uh, again, it's either parks, stop signs. Stop signs. Yeah. Uh, so much of a large percentage of the value that we receive as citizens comes from our local governments because we interact with all of that all of the time. Which is why it's so important to vote. Yes. Definitely, um, because our voice connects with the public good that we are going for. So if there is a vote out there for like you know, the issuance of municipal bonds, for instance, for schools or for parks, again, uh, those are just options that we get to choose. Yes, we would like to invest our dollars in this way. Um, and yeah, then there's stop signs are put in or speed bumps <laughs> that are, are put in as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also building their community, I often think of uh, a lot of the people that are picking up the trash or working on the recycling plants or the recycling centers. Those more often are operated and managed by county governments as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like everything around us, <laughs> there is some degree of involvement. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what for you about building uh, their community speaks to you the most? I think it's being invested in the community. So not only are you a part of the community, but you also are helping to build that community and build those bonds and help the community to be safe. And you have a say in how the tax dollars are spent. Right. Uh, and, you know, to that point, uh, we announced uh, that this show is coming up with this topic. And we also mentioned that there was a couple of different um, like individuals that people would like to have a quick shout out for for their work. Uh, and one of them was firefighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, we have a, a good friend of ours, uh, Cesar Lopez, um, who, you know, no relation <laughs> that we know of. But um, yeah, he's a firefighter here in Maryland as well. And just the amount of effort that he and everyone in the fire department, they dedicate. Right, running into danger and trying to help people out of it and just making sure that they're ready in a moment's notice. Can you imagine a person that is ready to run into fire to save another person's life? A person they don't even know. I mean, how it's just it's just amazing, you know, really, really thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the people that we depend on and that we count on uh, as we're driving around our neighborhoods. We see the fire departments everywhere. Uh, and so often um, there's different charities and fundraisers for firefighters. And they have, you know, the, the boots they mm -hmm. walk around for the donations to try to help support their community and their cause as well. Uh, I just think that that's a wonderful thing. And that really keeps our whole communities 
safe. Right. <laughs> they are well, building our community. And many times it's on a volunteer basis. Right. So, I mean, think about that. That's just, they're volunteering their time. They're volunteering, you know, their time and risking their lives for the community. Yeah. So I think that's a huge public service. They believe in it and it's the right thing to do. So that's, that's why they do it. And then also I think about city planners. I mean, people are there thinking about the design and infrastructure of how a city, a county, or a state is going to operate. Uh, what are the different infrastructure systems that are needed to make sure that there is good, safe operating systems and homes and communities and networks and power? Right, which we'd be remiss if we didn't mention one of your favorite shows, Spin City. Yes. That kind of went over all of that in, in that show. I love show. Spin City so much. Yes, it was such a great, great show. And they, they really did go over a lot of that because all of that is, is really a, there. Um, and of course, since we're mentioning um, great television shows, I always think of the West Wing. Uh, on the federal well. level. On the federal level, yeah. Thinking about larger uh, parks and, and how we really retain and preserve our national heritage that we have in the land that is around us and what we can really pass on to generations uh, to really have peace and comfort uh, really with, with the parks. Uh, and to have that for the next generations. Um, I think there was uh, something I was watching and they were talking about working in DC and sometimes it's very tumultuous but in order to combat that, you walk out onto Pennsylvania Avenue and you see all the structures there and all these buildings that have been here for, you know, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And to have comfort in that, to look at these structures and think, well, these have stood the test of time. So maybe we will too. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the enduring principles that we have and what we do of public service. Uh, and again, this doesn't mean that everything is 100% right or things are always going to operate well, but it's just the idea that people are willing to dedicate themselves to something that is greater than themselves to try to make a difference. And I think it's one thing to be able to kind of sit back and judge or criticize or have a contrary perspective, but still at the end of the day, uh, in the next morning or even that evening, a public servant gets up to make sure that things continue to operate. Or in the middle of the night, they're they're working, you know, whether it's at uh, TSA monitoring the, mm -hmm. you know, the air for you. It's it's just all the work that goes into it. And I think that's one of the things that many times I feel very thankful for is looking at all the people around me and all that they do and the various little things um, that they give up, whether it's time with family because family, they have long friends. commutes, mm -hmm. um, you know, commuting from another state potentially every day. So it's just a lot that these people um, give up and what they put into something that they're very proud of and they do it day after day. Right. I think it's amazing how many uh, people in the intelligence community, for instance, that have thwarted any number of different attacks or large disasters that have occurred or potentially could have occurred uh, from that happening. we may not know about. We may never know about it. Uh, and you know some give their lives for that. Mm -hmm. And we just don't know about it. The next morning we read the paper, or we listen to the news, uh, and it's just another boring day. Well, that's because someone uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice in order to keep us safe and we'll never know about it. Yeah. So, so it's, it's building a better community, I, I think is, is the bigger thing. Um, so another question then, uh, what is another way that we might know if we're a public servant? If we span across federal, state and local, which we've talked about that already with sure. the various shows that we've referenced. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially a public servant can be in any of those areas. So you can serve. And again, also tribal community. Right, and as, tribal. As well. yes. That's right. So in any of those areas, if you are using those public dollars to provide a service and to better the community, um, you are entrusted with the steward of those taxpayer dollars. Public funds or a public trust. 
and it is something that is given to us on behalf of the public in order to provide a good value and a service. Uh, it's just this inherent um, agreement that we have where we are entrusted to the safety and care and well-being of the community that we are a part of and therefore we agree that we are going to abide by the laws rules regulations and when appropriate work within the bounds as necessary to help make sure that everything changes for the better uh, or uh, even like a former congressman lewis was talking about to get in good trouble to help make sure that we are uh, allowing ourselves and our country to grow in the way that's needed it's just it's so wonderful to see that there are so many actions that are taken to really help make sure that we continue to live great and prosperous lives. Um, and while again, it's not perfect, it is something that is on the way uh, to a more perfect union, uh, a continued growth towards that, which is, which is wonderful. Right, and I think it's very important as a public servant to remember that piece is that you are the stewards of taxpayer dollars. And sometimes some people may forget that and want various things in the federal government that you know may not be very cost efficient. Mm -hmm. And you just have to think, think through, you know, this is this is not my money, even though, you know, while it may be my salary or things like that, it's it's the people's money. So I want to make sure that I am spending it as efficiently as possible and doing the very best I can do with it mm -hmm. um, to make sure that I am, again, bettering my community, bettering mm -hmm. my country, um, keeping the country safe. That we're all accountable uh, to each other, to the public and to how we use the funds. And you can even go to different websites uh, like usaspending.gov that really outlines and describes how the dollars are spent. Uh, you can look up a large portion of um, government employees, at least at the federal level, to see what their salaries are, what their bonuses are, all of that stuff, because those are public funds. And again, public funds is a public trust. Mm -hmm. um, the information is provided on um, you know, different websites, again, to, to show how dollars are being spent. There's, for the most part, an open process to see how the dollars and the bills are kind of formed. Um, and the, the bigger thing again is that while we can get caught up on the nuances and the details and a lot of the passions and the rhetoric about one way or the other about how government should operate, at the end of the day, public servants are still there behind all of that stuff to help make sure that things continue to function and operate, regardless of whichever vote goes one way or the or other. Or government shutdowns. Or government shutdowns, exactly. Yeah, uh, I mean, still there to make sure that everyone is safe mm -hmm. uh, and continuing to prosper. I, I think we have one more, right? Uh, how you might know if you're a public servant. Right, and this would be if you serve as an elected public servant or a career public servant, which I think we have a whole video on the difference between the two. Exactly, and there, there are two big differences. You know, I think a lot of times people hear public servant and they might think of an elected official. And that makes sense because these are people that are out in front of the camera. They are representatives. They are the ones that are trying to interact and speak with the public about public good and public works. But still, the instrument that which everything is implemented through, implemented through, is through public servants, through career public servants. Uh, yeah, they just continue to day in, day out, uh, move towards that that greater good. They are the the people behind the curtains. They are. Yeah, I mean, e pluribus unum, right? Out of many, one, this, this larger idea that we are here to really help move things together and we are stronger together. Um, and you know, what's so great is, uh, I, I love a couple of great quotations that relate to this. Um, anyone can be great because everyone can serve. Martin Luther King. Exactly right. Um, and then uh, JFK, uh, the, the, there's, there's one larger quote about, um, Anyone can make a difference and everyone should try uh, is, is, is a quotation. It took me a bit to, to grab that. But it's just such a, a beautiful thought because all of us have the opportunity to dedicate ourselves to something that we could make another person's life better. Uh, and you could choose to say, you know, this is one thing or another, but 
it's still the opportunity that, that we can work together towards building something great. Um, kind of like in uh, Falcon and, and the Winter Soldier, uh, the only power that he has is the belief that we can do better. That's a great power. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So, Karen, again, what were the four things um, that if you listen to them, you might be a public servant? <laughs> so, leverages public funds, mm -hmm. builds their community, right? spans across federal, state, and local, and tribal, Thank you. Mm -hmm. And serves as an elected or career public servant. Yes. So there, there's lots of areas that a person could be a public servant. Uh, and I'm wondering if you were to kind of take a moment as you finish listening to the show or listening to this podcast and you're driving home, you're out and about in the community. If you ask yourselves those questions, how many times you will see either a public servant or the good work of a public servant around you just happening all the time? Uh, I mean, regulations on like food, water, gas, electricity, uh, public works, you know, everything that's in involved with all of that. Every uh, time you get in your car, you notice the inspection sticker is up. You got to do that. Right. Or when you got to get your, your plates renewed and you go to the DMV, there's mm -hmm. another one, which I think the DMV gets a pretty bad rap, especially did, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, what was it, Zootopia? <laughs> Wait, while it was funny with, you know, the sloths and everything. It's still, again, public service and they're there providing for you. Yeah. Can you imagine a job where you can guarantee going to work every day and having someone yell at you? It's just, it's, it's a tough job. Yeah. And, and people being like so demanding because they have such needs that only you could work through and you have to be able to manage through the system to help a person in a way that could benefit them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's definitely gotta be a, a tough job. High stress. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but those are just some of the areas. So for this uh, public service recognition week, please take the opportunity to really just say thank you to uh, anyone that is uh, a public servant that you can find. Next and time you're at the DMV, say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and a very simple thing is to say thank you for your service. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, they, they are public servants. So why can't we thank them for the service that they're providing for others as well? So, yeah. Uh, speaking of service and added value, I know we now have questions from the Gov Geekdom. Uh, and as always, please feel free to come out and see us on any of the social media sites that we have or come out to thegovgeeks.com, submit a question. We're more than happy to answer them here on the show. Uh, the two questions that we have this week, I think, came from uh, a recent uh, coaching session um, with a, a group's uh, group coaching session, as well as a masterclass as well. Uh, Karen, what's the first question? So the first one is, how do I get into a new job series? So yeah. in the federal government, you have job series, which are part of the job families, mm -hmm. and you can find a plethora of opportunities there. So if you are already in a specific job series number, and it looks like you're looking to go to another one, what are the steps? Oh, that's a great question. Well, and first I'll say that actually coming this Tuesday, we will have a masterclass session from 6 to 7 p.m. on this very topic. So please feel free to come to our website, thegovgeeks.com, to register and sign up for this. We're going to go into everything in a lot more detail. It's a free one-hour masterclass, which we look forward to sharing with you. So the main things that I'll share is a job series has a certain set of requirements or job classifications for that position. It's, it's unique to that. That's why it's its own separate class. So as you are identifying where you are and where you want to go, target your resume around the needs and concerns of your target job series that you're applying for. So this way, you're not telling someone about all the stuff that you did previously that relates to another job series. Unless it relates to the one you're going for. Yes, because it relates to the one that you're going for. That's exactly right. Show them that you meet the qualifications of that job series. That's definitely the main thing to do. And what if I don't? Like, what if I'm looking at the job series and I'm seeing that, well, I might not meet some specific criteria. Like, let's say if I'm going from a 0343, which is mm -hmm. management, management and program, program analysis. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to like um, 
1800, right? Mm -hmm. Is it 1800, mm -hmm. which is like law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So how would I, you know, make sure that I'm able to go for that if I'm looking at the requirements and there are some things that I may not quite have? Well, first, I mean, look at your experiences and ask yourself, honestly, where did you do the core type of work that is related to that job area? And if you don't have 100% of everything that's there, do the best that you can in capturing everything that you know about that allows you to move forward towards that other job series. And then the areas that you don't really have a lot of areas of overlap, well, now you have a gap analysis and you know exactly what you need to add to your career and your credentials in order to get that. Then you can ask yourself other questions like, where can I go get these types of experiences? Details, rotations, perhaps there's training, there's volunteering, exactly. So if you are really passionate about what other job series are out there and you wanna get into another one, then this is gonna be fun for you because right from day one, you get to start doing the things that you really care about to move yourself towards that other job series. Yeah, volunteering, rotations, details. Start doing informational interviews. Absolutely. With people who are in that field. And just because you don't have 100% of the requirements of the job, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get the job. It just means that uh, you'll be able to either get in at a certain grade level and then work your way up in that area, or that there is some on the job training. There might be some great skill sets that you have that other applicants don't have that actually puts you in the front uh, running for the position. So don't sell yourself short. Yeah. Great advice. <laughs> so the next question is tips to stay motivated in my job search. Yeah. Question mark. Th this is a big thing. Yeah. Do we have any tips to stay <laughs> motivated in your job search? And honestly, the, the main thing is think about what you care about and what you're passionate about. If you are driven by your passion and you care about what you're doing, you're going to be more engaged in that. So you're going to want to have more informational interviews, more, again, details, rotations, volunteer experiences. You'll, you'll be more creative to find other areas to get into that. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a bigger process. And getting into government or getting ahead in government, it's not like a snap of the fingers where you're able to automatically get into whatever job. <laughs> you know, hiring in government doesn't really happen for the most part overnight. You have to be persistent. Yeah. And don't give up. And so you, if you enjoy the journey and you appreciate what you're doing along the way, then it doesn't feel like something that you need a motivation to do. You know, sometimes people, they try to envision, well, what are all the great things that I'm going to get once I reach the finish line? Uh, and then they get to the finish line and they have that, and then they get a little disappointed. The idea is to think, well, what about this opportunity now is something that I'm excited about? So continually from day one to when you get the position to when you continue to moving on in your career, you're gonna be happy and engaged and excited because you're always doing something that you enjoy. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you so much for asking your questions. Um, this is again, Public Service Recognition Week. It's one of the best weeks out of the year. Uh, wanted to wear the best bow tie that I, I could find <laughs> for this. Um, Karen, what are your closing thoughts on the subject? I think it's clear that fulfillment can begin with finding something that you're good at. And we talk about this in our GovGeeks Venn diagram. Um, find something that you're good at, find something that the world needs and use your given skills and talents to help build a better community, a better country, just a better world. Thank you so much. And again, sincerely, thank you for your service. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.